game one's gonna be. Yeah, Hassan is Raiden. I'm just connecting in. So, Rabia's gonna be our game one. The Civs are going to be uh, Mayan for Hamza Krumza, very top tier Arabia Civ, and Chinese for T90. So I would say they got two of the top three best Arabia Civs. Uh, this is more what we expect. Um, I love this as well. Uh, you could see that T90 actually started making the house and then went to the food as soon as he got it under the TC. This is the right way to play, and then he can uh, do the house after. Uh, really nice. China start is all about getting to food as fast as you possibly can. Get your bills making, and then you start doing the extra wood, you start making the houses, you do the other things. Um, but you do have uh, uh, a little bit where you have some population in your TC, so you don't need to make those, those first houses, and I think that I would imagine that's what slows a lot of players down if they don't like playing China, if they don't like the Dark Age. It's probably because they're not doing their eco fast enough. T90 is actually able to go on only six vills. Usually you see people going for seven with China, making sure that it's uh, not idling at all. See how he maintains. Yeah, see this idling? Idle TC for about 30 seconds already. But that, a lot of that is from the start. But you don't want it to add up. I mean, China's eco is all about, can I keep my build production going? So both players here have sieves that are at such a high tier that they can play Full defender's advantage. Uh, they can play really strong uh, early feudal. I, I'd say more Mayan uh, going into um, barracks range openings can put a lot of pressure on. Uh, China might favor gearing to scout into range if the map's really long. And it looks like the map is pretty far away, but um, it's going to be very defendable for our Mayan player. While here, here, while here, and here have safe gold in both locations if needed. Really safe wood, stone, and berries. So even if we lost all of our golds, Mayans can always put a bunch of bills on stone, drop a castle to defend, or TC out of it. So not a problem. I'm really liking uh, Hamza's map for him. Rack's going out. Look at the Rack's position, of course, towards the center of the map, towards where his opponent's going to be. You're gonna see T90 likely doing the same thing. Again, it's their proximity. To the opponent, you want your military buildings closer to your opponent so that you can replace your army if you actually get into a good position where you're pushing him. T90 for two wood. He's got a mill down though, so I don't think we'll see any drushing out of our China player. It looks like pre-mill drush though is in the cards though for our Mayan player. He's got gold, he's got no mill, he's got a racks down. These are all very big signs that it's drush. Uh, it, it is really important though to like to get good at thinking like we're seeing the whole map right so it's very easy for us to identify a drush but you want to look at all the little things that that seem kind of sus right for when you're scouting your opponent in your own games does he have four on wood does he have a mill when I have a mill do I see a Rax Rax would be the best or do I see tin off a gold line so all of these things combined, right? Any farms down early. We want to be kind of trying to read them as much as we can. T90 now sees the racks. He knows it's likely a drush. He's going to small wall in his villagers. Um, wall timings, right? You're thinking a drush is going to hit you before nine minutes. So if you can wall your whole map by nine minutes, go right ahead, live your life. If you can't, you're probably going to be doing small walls. So you can see that's where T90 is going in. He's going to do small walls, that way he can keep his eco going. He doesn't have to idle a bunch to try and wall this huge, um, these open spaces. His opponent is now into Drush. So, uh, Drush openings, you could see Drush into a couple of ranges and some more feudal, but late feudal pressure, or you could see Drush into FC. Both are going to be really hard to deal with. Looks like 
T90 is going to go for the gold route, so we'll see Man at Arms coming out. Man at Arm into range is probably going to be one of the faster uh, unit choices for dealing damage to a potentially walled opponent that could be on FC Tech. We don't know. We're blind right now in T90's position. So it's kind of hard playing against uh, a Drush because once they Drush, they have your vision, and then you have to guess whether they're FC or more army. So good players may send their scout forward. They might think they need their scout for a little bit in their base. Kind of depends on what's going on in the game at the moment. Um, I'd like to see T90 go forward now. He, it looks like he is. He's feeling pretty safe now at his base. Militia won't really kill too much. Have to do some rewalling. That's fine. Probably see a range dropped right here, like immediately. More farms. Well, maybe I'm a liar. It's going to be man at arm for T90, but will it be instant range? Obviously, it's not instant. We got two farms down already. So if if you're if you're starting to make farms, you're starting to wall. You're thinking more like turtle into FC type play and light army. Uh, if he dropped the range, it would give him archers across field much quicker so that he could actually get into his opponent's base. But oh my god, Hamza's actually going to be outside of his walls. What a bloody loon! Hamza! Wow, Hamza had all of the initiative here. He, he got to choose whether he was FC or army and keep T90 guessing, but walking outside of his wall and then opening his wall to his opponent's army is going to be disastrous. Absolutely disastrous. Now his now T90 is going to get a complete scout off. He's going to figure out what his opponent's doing. He can also get the range in a decent location in terms of uh, proximity, right? And he can wall behind it. So this is shifting towards T90's favor, even though it was opening into a rush and potentially into Hums's favor. I like the quick walls here. Very good job. Like to see a little bit more walls here, real quick. Need a range out. Oh my god, I didn't even realize it was Double Rax. Why? This, Hamza is like uh, Brett Favre in it right now, and I'm sure you guys are like, who the heck is Brett Favre, you boomer? But, you know, that's, that's your problem, not mine. This is definitely a throw. I'd say this is this is a, a small throw and a Hail Mary throw. The double eagles is like, I feel like I'm behind my opponent in skill. I'm going to try something interesting and different. That was definitely a throw, but this was massive. Opening that up, walking outside, um, not tracking T90's army. T90 wasn't following the Drush anymore, so he knows that the Drush wasn't going to be... Or the... The army was going to be at his own base and not as a pawns. Whoa. T90 doing a great job of baiting his opponent's army into the TC instead of fighting him. Run away! That's T90's. What he says every time. Run away! Use our towers. Use our TCs. Shoot from a safe location. Disgusting. Go down and brawl him. This is the right play though. This is great. He's, he's playing very well. Um, villagers. Now plus two for T90. You would expect that though. It's China. Let's see. Idle eco. He's been idling the eco of Hamza quite well. A couple extra minutes there. Idle TC. Not too much more than just the China idle TC. So T90 getting a better of the game so far. Big gaff there. Uh, I'd like to see a full wall here by Hamza. Babish. Full Eagles is kind of weird to me. I think that if he went uh, Rats range, make some make some skirms so you can clear the archers, then you can go a second uh, uh, barracks, and your Eagles will clear spear, skirm, and scout. So. It, you you have to get rid of the archer pet first, especially in this sort of um, 
opening where he forced his opponent into early range because his opponent knows I need a range to get into the enemy's base and if not I'll just defend with range so he knows it's going to be range tech and very high likelihood of archer since he already saw the bolt. Not to mention the mad armor coming from the opponent. He may, he, I think he just didn't see the mad arms coming out. I think he didn't expect it at all. I think that really, really threw him off. So a lot of this is just um, snowballing off of that. Eagles going to die here. T90's got plus one, so he's got fletching with these archers. They're going to do a bit more damage against the Vils. Bill count still maintaining that plus two, 1490. Both players doing some raiding. A lot going on. Though I think that it, it definitely favors T90 in both locations. Not saying that he won't get cleared, but the, the price of these armies and the, the streamline of into range deck is much, much stronger. He's gonna move out here a bit. Or not. <laughs> is that <laughs> oh, man. what a quote what a... more eels coming out so he's tripling down here he's got a, a third Rax coming out and if you're gonna go go big The problem is it's a melee unit. It, it's like going three stable scout. Like, if your opponent walls, you die. So it's very hard in this meta, with all of the mines and wood mines being moved towards the TC by the devs for, for like, uh, the easiest defender's waller's advantage. It's so difficult to go any melee line. You really have to gear towards towards range lines, which is why range sits are so OP and eco sieves are so OP. So this is just like destined to fail unless you keep your opponent open the whole time. That's a big, that's a big ask in this ELO, or not ELO, in this uh, meta with the way the mechs are. A lot of market use going down. Looks like Hums is gonna try to go up to the next stage now. T90 is already on the way there. Be there in one minute. Gonna just wait for crossbow. No reason to push out. He'll wait for crossbow. He's got 200 stone. He'll probably drop one TC, move out with some crossbow uh, until he sees his opponent go into castle age, and then maybe he'll he'll defend again. Kind of treat them like knights. The, the the really good thing for eagles is that it's like they're a knight in castle age, uh, but you can make them in feudal. So it's kind of the mechanic about uh, like crossbows versus CA, right? Crossbows are better than CA because you can make them the whole time, and then you have a big wall to snowball with. It's not that they're actually better than the CA. In terms of stats. Double stable coming out. Not what I would have expected, but uh, he's against full eagle, so it's whatever. Have some knights in front of those uh, crossbow. Can't hurt. Second TC not coming out. He's going to go for map control first, so he's going to add more production for military. He's going to push into his opponent a bit. Eagles can't do much here. Gonna do a little counter raiding. T90 again showing why uh, Defender Meta is so strong. It's not the Palisades that's the problem, it's the houses behind them that never die. 900 HP uh, that you can make at any second. Now T90 will keep pushing until Green gets Castle and then I could, I could see him walking back a little bit. Um, he definitely doesn't want to get caught by a huge spam of Eagles. A swarm of eagles, rather. Shot. He'll be taking the fights, though, until he sees the upgrades, it seems. He did add those stables as well. So he's thinking map control rather than ecoing. Eagle upgrades coming in here. About 20 seconds left until T90 is going to get uh, his whole army killed. Well, he's got upgrades. No, don't fight yet! Don't fight yet! Oh, his upgrade's just now coming in with the armor. I think he should have waited slightly longer. He will take a good trade and, and kill T90's army, but it could have been even better. Um, that's that's the kind of point where I was like, thinking T90 would definitely run 
run back at least to this hill where his knights could get could replenish his numbers. Uh, so now he's thrown his crossbow army away, which means that T90 also is going to be on the melee tech. So both players... Ah, man. Hamza's walls. Just not here this game. If he had walls, he would be against a melee unit, and he uh, would force the same problem he was having onto T90, where T90 wouldn't be able to get in and damage. Um, as we see, though, T90 was able to get in, and actually he's gonna get some sick damage with one knight. Oh my god, what? What kind of tree is this, dude? Oh, 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 D, 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 D. Yep, Humza's got a lot of army. T90 though, I mean, you gotta like double these. It's more like 10 to 28 because they do have more HP. Um, they cost more though. Ding, ding, ding. Thanks for the biddies. Would lower HP houses make it better? I think so, DJ. I think that my... If I... If I was to, just for the house mechanic of bowling, I have a lot of critiques on different ways they can fix a lot, but I think they should put less HP, and they should put more population into each house, so that you don't need very many houses, because at least, and they should also cost more. So they cost more, you put more, eco, more uh, pop space into it, so you have like 10 houses in a game versus like 200 houses in a game. I know I'm being I'm <clears throat> I'm being extreme here. You don't actually make 200 houses, but um, it would make less houses on the field, which means less walls on the field. Yeah, T90 is being pushed. He's still up by five bills. He's got TCs, so he's against a full one TC right now. All he has to do is not die. And that's a lot easier than killing your opponent. Not dying is not that difficult. You wall up, you TC up, you drop a castle, you go towards them with uh, really cheap units for the for their value um, because you don't need upgrades, which would be mangonels, scorpions, monks. You don't have to upgrade these things. You don't have to have a lot of them. You just get very low numbers. You need low production numbers and no upgrades. So um, defending is just an incredible advantage. Um, T90 is though sticking to the knight route, and this could potentially be a way he could lose. If Hamza wins this game, I I'm going. I don't even know what's going to happen. My whole life is going to change. What is going on? Are we seeing this guy going full, like, white wizard? Humps has got plus 7 bills! Humps has got 33 against 8 military! I've written him off! I wrote him off and he's like, well... Well, you're gonna write a book about it now? Oh my... Don't... Don't tell me this flock of eagles wins! Whoa. Whoa. Wow. So, again, back when T90 had those crossbows and like two knights. He should have ran back. We saw Ad well, I shouldn't talk about the other games that we've casted because they're going to YouTube, but uh, we saw other players having similar situations earlier today and uh, they made a different decision. Wow, the flood is here, dude. The flood is in. And, and now we've got big problems because, oh! No way, dude! Did T90 just lose game one? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hamza Krumza. What is up, dude? That's a name you won't forget now. It's a great name. 
It's hard to forget the name just because the name, but now he's taken games off pretty good level players and in a 1TC fashion. Oh my god. My heart feels warm inside. This is great. Thank you, Hamza. Fantastic win. I think if you walled better, you wouldn't even have had like the issues that you had. You definitely could have done this a bit better. But that's good. That just means you can improve even even farther. I know I've been saying this about a lot of the, the kind of lower yellows, but they, there's been a few mistakes and definitely some improvement can be made. But this is great. You, you don't need to improve that much to kill T90, I guess. Not with eagles. Not with the flock of eagles. Well played. Wow.